Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, June 13, 2021. The title of our Sunday School lesson is Delivered from Fear. Background scripture will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 8. Our Sunday School material is the NIV Standard Lesson Commentary 2020-2021. You have my email there and my cell phone number. If you want a copy of the PowerPoint, you inform me or you may ask the office. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, once again, we are very thankful for this opportunity and privilege to study your words. We will be studying the event where you rebuke the storm and the strong waves. And you are teaching the disciples on little faith. Help us through this Sunday school lesson. Help us so that we will increase our faith, just like how it happened with the disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so year at a glance, we have a one-year curriculum. The first quarter, we studied God's world and God's people. And for three months, we studied the book of Genesis. Second quarter, our love for God and call in the New Testament. In the third quarter, we studied prophets faithful to God's covenant the 1,000 years of prophets and prophetic leadership that is for the whole three months, March, April, May. Today we are in the fourth quarter, confident hope. Ang matatag na pananampalataya sa hinaharap. We will be looking at these books in the Bible, Matthew, Leviticus, Luke, Romans, Hebrew, 1 John, and 2 Corinthians. Quarter at a glance. Confident hope. Unit one is Jesus teaches about faith. Here in the unit one, we look at hope regarding earthly physical needs. And this will be for the month of June. Unit two, the same faith and salvation. For the month of July, it will be hope for eternal salvation. Unit 3, faith gives us hope. That will be for the month of August. The inseparable connection between faith and hope. Okay, so Unit 1, June, we are already on the second Sunday. And we are now looking at Chapter 8 of Matthew. Last Sunday, it was Sermon on the Mount, chapter 6 of Matthew. And these are the rest of the lessons. Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 14, and Luke chapter 17. These will be the topics for the month of July. And these will be the topics for the month of August. Okay, so let's just go through the scripture. Matthew chapter 8, 23 to 27. That is the title of this uh, lesson. Jesus comes the storm. Verse 23. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. So makai si Jesus sa bangka kasama ang kanyang mga alagad. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Bumugso sa lawa ang isang malakas na unos, at halos matabunan ng mga alon ang bangka. Ngunit natutulog noon si Jesus. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us! We're going to drown! Kaya't nilapitan siya ng mga alagat at ginising, Panginoon, 
tulungan ninyo kami. Sabi nila, lulubog tayo. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. At sinabi niya sa kanila, Ano't kayo'y natatakot? Napakaliit naman ng pananalig ninyo. Bumangon siya, sinaway ang hangin, at ang dagat ay tumahimik ang mga ito. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Namangha silang lahat at ang sabi, Anong tao ito? Kahit ang hangin at ang dagat ay tumatalima sa kanya. He replied, uh, This is the key verse, Matthew chapter 8, 26. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Lesson aim. These are the things that we should learn. Recall key elements of Jesus stilling of the storm. Yan, dapat makita natin yung mga bagay na naan doon noong patahimikin ni Jesus ang, ang bagyo. Ano yung mga importanteng elemento doon? Pag-aaralan natin. Compare and contrast the text with the other little faith passages. Yan, pag-aaralan din natin. And contrast natin yung paggamit ng little faith Take note, dito sa itong little faith na to were used five times by the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one is our lesson. Another one in Matthew chapter 6. Another one in chapter 14. Another one in chapter 16. And in Luke chapter 12. And the third, the repent of an instance of a lack of faith. Ito yung challenge sa bawat isa sa atin. May mga pangyayari na pinapakita natin na maliit ang ating pananampalataya. Let's just look at these passages. Itong mga apat pa na to. The first one is what we have just read. Dahil, dahil, dahil sa bagyo. In Matthew chapter 6, he used this. You of little faith, And he's walk, talking about clothes, that of the grass of the field. Merong mga damit ang mga damo dun sa parang. Uh, kayo pa kaya? Ayan. You of little faith. Another time that Jesus used this, you of little faith. Uh, ito naman yung chapter 14. Naglakad. Naglakad si Jesus dun sa uh, tubig. Tapos ginaya siya ni Pedro. Pero lumubog si Pedro. Bakit? Eh, nag-doubt eh. Sabi niya, you of little faith. Ito naman, chapter 16. Huh? This was the instance when Jesus was talking to a Samaritan woman. Bumili si mga disipulo niya. Bumili ng tinapay. Pagdating niya, Papakainin na natin, mukhang nagugutom na si Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus, You of little faith, why are you talking about, about having a bread? And then, another one, sabi niya, Huwag kayong mag-alala kung gano'ng kagandang isusuot ninyo. Bibigyan kayo ng Diyos. Tignan niyo yung mga bulaklak sa parang. Napakaganda ng mga damit nila. These are the other four instances where Jesus used this praise. You of little faith. Lesson outline. Ayan ang lesson outline. This will be the coverage of our lesson. Introduction. There are three parts of the introduction. What are you afraid of? Then the lesson context. The Sea of Galilee. Another introduction. The lesson context. Miracles. And then the passages, verse 23 to 24, Roman numeral number one, the perilous situation. Roman numeral number two, the act of deliverance. 
verse 25 to 27, then we have the conclusion. These are the coverage, and we will take all of this within the duration of our Sunday school. Okay, introduction na tayo. What are you afraid of? Sabi dyan, it all depends on when, where, why, how, and by whom it is asked. Some common fears are agoraphobia. Ibig sabihin, fears of open spaces. Another one, claustrophobia. Fear of closed spaces. Xenophobia, fear of dogs. Elorophobia, fear of cats, and so on. So maraming mga phobia, phobia. You can just think of anything, water, whatever. Huh? Sometimes they seem to make little sense. You know, daw, mga tanong na to parang walang, walang masyadong katuturan. Why? Think of a strong, smart person, takot na takot sa maliit na daga. <laughs> parang it makes little sense. No? Takot na takot. Fears may be connected with trauma. Yeah. Yung may mga past uh, experiences which brought fear, trauma, may trauma. There is another way we can use this title, question. It can be a, meant rhetorically. Yan. Pwede pala itong hindi pala ito tanong, but rather it is a statement rather than an inquiry. Ito yung, you know that you have no reason to be afraid. Yan. Hindi talaga ito tanong, but it is a statement. A, a, a question that does not need an answer. Rhetorical. So, what are you afraid of? It could be read as, you know that you are, you have no reason to be afraid of. Our text today is about a situation that provoked fear. The fear of death in a de- deadly situation. Yung mga disipulo, takot na takot. Bakit? Ano yung nangyayari? Lulubog na sila sa dagat. Dahil malakas ang bagyo. How Jesus spoke and acted in the face of that fear can teach us much about the Lord we serve. Ngayon, ito ngayon ang main focus nitong pangyayaring ito. Pag-aaralan natin ito. At in the process, we will know more about who Jesus is. Sino ba talaga itong si Hisokristo na ito? Sa pamamagitan nitong lesson natin. Okay, uh, introduction, lesson, context, Sea of Galilee. Pag-usapan naman natin itong the Sea of Galilee. Jesus' ministry in Matthew Gospel takes place mostly in Galilee. Wow, it is the region, the region was named for the body of water at its center. Known in the, statement, in the New Testament as Sea of Galilee or Sea of Tiberias. Yan. Merong, merong tubig doon sa gitna. Yun ang Sea of Galilee. Yung area, yung paligid, yun ang Galilee. Galilee. So, nandun sila sa Sea of Galilee. Yan. Gano'n ba kalaki itong Sea of Galilee? 41 acres. Nandun sa gitna. Nandun na paligid ng mga bundok. Nandun sa gitna yung Sea of Galilee. 41 acres lang ang laki. Gano'n kahaba? From north to south, it's 12 miles. From east to west, is 7.5 miles. Yan. 12 miles, 7.5 miles. So, ganun lang kalaki yung Sea of Galilee. Napapalibutan ngayon, the area is called Galilee. Kaya sabi nga dyan, its size makes it more of a lake than a sea. The Sea of Galilee was a center of fishing. Yan. Yung marami dun sa mga disipulo ni Jesus, dyan, na, dyan nangingisda. Dyan sila. So, alam, kilala nila itong Lugar na to alam nila to kabisado nila ito. Ito, 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 mga natatakot na fisherman na to mga batidong fisherman. Diyan sila nangingisda. The Sea of Galilee is also used as a medium of transportation. Yeah, ito yung Galilee. Kaysa iikot ka pa na napakalayo, eh, bagbangka ka na ng diretso. Pero disagwan lang, walang motor. Yan ngayon so, at a given time, pag magandang panahon, maraming bangka doon sa gitna ng Uh, sea of Galilee na yun, marami because it's being used for fishing and it's being used for transportation, medium of, medium of transportation. 
Following the sermon, miracles na tayo. Miracles. Lesson context, miracles. Uh, last time, we talked of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5 to 7. That is the Sermon on the Mount. And this one says for Jesus' authority in teaching. Yung Sermon on the Mount says for Jesus' authority in teaching. And that was our lesson last Sunday. Today, chapters 8 and 9 focuses largely on Jesus' miracles. Yan, miracles naman. Yung pag-uusapan natin dito, chapter 8 and 9, pagkatapos ng authority in teaching, this naman yung Jesus' miracles. This demonstrate His authority in actions as they consistently point out the power that could belong to God alone. Here in chapter 8 and chapter 9, miracles, there are several miracles performed by Jesus. At itong mga milagro na to, just lang ang pwedeng gumawa. Just lang ang pwedeng muna. It belong to God alone. O, papaano? How, how did God perform all these miracles? Salita lang. With word. That's it. Jesus was able to heal the sick. With word, He cleansed the leprosy. With word, He cast out evil spirits. With word, He commanded the forces of nature. All of these miracles can only be performed by God. That is who Jesus is. He is performing all these miracles. And these miracles can only be performed by God. Jesus did not use His divine power for His own benefit, but rather, his miracles were for the sake of others. As such, the miracles were signs. The miracles were signs. Signs of what? Signs that God's kingdom huh, is breaking into the world. Doon sa Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Sabi ni Jesus, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. It is near. It is coming. It is here. What is the proof that it is coming? The signs. What are the signs that Jesus is saying? The miracles. The miracles were the signs that the kingdom of God is coming. God's reign would vanquish the sin, threat, and consequences. God's people would then live in His presence, safe and secure for eternity. Jesus' miracles demonstrated that promised future. Ito ngayon yung ibig sabihin nito. In the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the first time, this is the first time, the control is not complete. Satan is still there on earth. Marami pang gulo, marami pang, marami pang disease, etc., etc. But it will come. It will come. That it will be, the God's reign will be complete. Jesus made salvation possible by giving his life. And that is his greatest act of power. What is the greatest act of power? The resurrection. The resurrection. But as we begin today's text, that is yet a year or so in the future. Eh, malayo pa yon, Dahil nangangaral pa lang siya ngayon. Okay, so here is our passages. Uh, perilous situation. Verse 23, then he got into the boat. Yeah, sumakay na siya sa boat. Pero sabi ng lesson natin, eh, pasadahan natin. What happened before verse 23? 18 to 22. Yung verse 18 to 22, mayroong dalawang lalaki ron. Eh. Sabi ng dalawang lalaki, uh, Jesus, Lord Jesus, sama kami, sama kami. Sinagot sila ni Jesus, The Son of Man, does not have pillow to lie on. Sabi niya, nangihiram lang ako ng, ng, ano, ng banig, ng, uh, ng uh, unan. Sabi niya. Jesus is pointing out the cost of God's kingdom. What is the cost of God's kingdom? Yung dalawa gusto sumamay. Jesus was saying, it will cost everything they have. That is the cost of the kingdom of heaven. What is the cost? Everything you have. Let us see. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Sabi niya. Yung kingdom of heaven daw, 
parang treasure revealed. Yung lalaki, naki, may nakita siyang treasure, may nakita siyang treasure, ha? what did he do? He sold, he sold all he had to, so that he can have that treasure hidden. So the kingdom of heaven is like treasure in heaven. Uh, treasure hidden. Another one, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. Parang kingdom of heaven is like a fine pearl for this man. Nakita niya yon. Anong ginawa niya? He sold everything so that he can buy the fine pearls. Verse 23b, and his disciples followed him. Napag-usapan naman natin itong mga disciples na to. He and his disciples were headed to the region of Gadarin. Uh, that was in chapter 28. Kasi hindi binanggit dito kung saan papunta eh. Doon sila sa, papunta sa Gadarin. Now, the, the disciples that were with him, sabi, more, most likely, yun yung mga 12 disciples, yung close, close disciples niya. The term disciple means learner who accepts and assists spreading the teaching of another. Yeah. So, pati yung mga gusto ibang sumasama sa kanila, disciples din. But, meron yung mga labindalawang close disciples to Jesus. And they were also called apostles. Pero, sabi dyan, but since the boat have some limitation, malit lang yung, yung bangka. Yung bangka nila, malit lang eh. So most likely, only the twelve original ones were with Jesus. Yan. In verse Matthew, uh, ito, Matthew 10, chapter 10, pass forward, he called his disciples, and ano yung uh, binigay niyang authority? To drive out sp- evil spirit, to heal every sickness and disease. Yan yung binigay niya na trabaho sa kanila, authority. O, pasada lang. Sino ba itong mga 12 apostles na to? Yan, ito, pinangalanan. Si Peter, Andrew, James, uh, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, another James, sons of Alphius, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas Iscariot. Yan yung mga pangalan ng mga 12 apostles. Jesus did not choose these disciples because of exemplary in every way. <laughs> They, ano ba yung mga qualification nito mga 12 disciples na to? Sabi rito, no exemplary qualification. First, ito mga disciples na, number one, failing to understand Jesus' mission. They do not understand Jesus' mission. Ito mga disciples, pasadahan natin yung mga scriptures na nagsasabi dyan. In Matthew chapter 6, Parang ito. Who do you say I am? Diba? Some say you are John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, etc. etc. Hey, kayo, kayo. And Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Wow! Correct! Pero dahil sinabi yan ng Holy Spirit sa'yo, later, on the same chapter, on the same chapter, kinukwento ni Jesus, Mamamatay ako. Pero on the third day, ah, pa, mabubuhay ulit ako. Sabi ni Peter, Never, Lord! This shall never happen to you! Ano sabi ni Jesus? Get behind me, Satan. Ibig sabihin, hindi talaga nila naiintindihan ang mission ni Jesus. Ano pa ang proof na hindi nila naiintindihan kung ano ang mission ni Jesus? Ito, 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 magkapatid na to, James and John. Sabi, Lord, Lord, pagdating natin doon sa heaven, ha, alalahanin mo, doon ako sa kanan, kapatid ko doon sa kaliwa. Sabi niya, hindi niyo naiintindihan ang sinasabi niyo. Yung kaharihan ng Diyos, hindi katulad ng kaharihan ng mga hintel na makaharihan doon. Whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. Yun ang kingdom of heaven. Sabi niya, you want to be the greatest, then be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as ransom. Ganon doon, hindi katulad ng kaharian dito. Sinasabi niya, hindi niyo naiintindihan. O another time na pinapakita na hindi naiintindihan ng disipulo yung mission ni Jesus. Sabi ng mga disipulo, oh, yung mga bata, palisin dito, palisin. What did Jesus say? Let the little children come 
Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to them. If you will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so on. So here is uh, another one. Huh? Pakainin na yun si Jesus. Hindi, huwag kayo magalala. My food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to finish, etc. Ayan. So, yun yung, yun yung prueba na hindi nila naintindihan ang mission ni Jesus. Ano pa? These disciples are fearful and spiritually deaf. <coughs> Basahin lang natin to. When Jesus walks on water, sabi niya, take courage, don't be afraid. Takot sila, kaya lumulubog eh. In our lesson, here, he comes the storm. Sabi niya, why are you so afraid? So this is the fearful. Ano pa yung mga picture ng mga disciples? Itong mga disciples na pinili niya. Inilagay ko doon, number three, they would fall out. They would fall away. Pagdating nung crucifixion, wala na ka na makikita mga disipulo, takbuhan na silang lahat. However, take note, after that, in the resurrection, He will welcome them back. Yun yung picture ng, ng mga uh, disciples. In Matthew 28, sabi niya dyan, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples all nations. Number four, they continued to misunderstand this mission at least up until the time of his ascension. Hindi pa rin nila naiintindihan. Hindi pa rin nila maintindihan. Look at yung umpisa nung uh, book of Acts. So when they meet together, they ask, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Hindi pa rin nila naiintindihan. Yung kingdom of Israel, the, 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 where you have a king, etc. God is t- talking of the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual sense. Number four. Merong number five. Ibibitin muna natin. Dahil hindi naman puro negative itong performance ng mga disciples. Mamaya yung number five. Verse 24a, suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. Yan, a deadly storm. Biglang nagkaroon ng bagyo. Nangyayari daw ito talaga yung doon. Alam ng mga fisherman yan, yung mga batidong fisherman na ang iba doon ay uh, apostles ni Jesus. Gano'n ba kalaki yung fishing boat nila? Yan o, na-discover yan eh. Ha? 27 feet, 8 feet in width. 27 din, maliit lang. 8 feet, 27 feet. Eh, ilan sila? Natutulog si Jesus. Bumaabag yun, nagkakagulog si Jesus. Natutulog. Mark's account was in the stern. Sleeping on a cushion. Meron pa siyang may cushion. Doon natutulog sa may likod. May question, sabi ni Marco. Oh, at doon sa bandang likod, nung uh, bangka, storm. Somehow, Jesus was sleeping through the storm. Bakit kaya siya natutulog? Ano kaya? Pag-iisip. Yung mga Bible uh, students, nag-uusap sila. Bakit tulog? Bakit? Is he so exhausted? Pagod na pagod ba siya? Na-drain ba siya? Drain na drain ba siya? Yan. But there are passages, contradicting passages, na pwedeng yes, pwedeng no ang sagot. O, let us see. Alam nyo ito. Uh, pass forward sa Matthew chapter 26. Ano ibig sabihin ng chapter 26? Eh, malapit na sa chapter 27, 28. Yun na yung kamatayan ni Jesus. Malapit na. Pero at this time, hindi pa siya napapako sa cross. Uh, what was the scenario? Magdadasal siya sa Gethsemane. May kasama siyang disipulo. Sabi niya, may maiwan kayo rito. Doon napupunta ako doon sa taas. Na magdadasal. Magdasal kayo para uh, hindi kayo pasukin ng jablo. Ayan. So pumunta siya. Pagbalik niya, binalikan niya, yung disipulo na, na sinabihan niya na magdasal. Tulog. Tulog. Yung ginising niya, ano ba kayo? Oh, magdasal kayo. Huwag kayong tutulog-tulog. Oh, alis uli siya. 
Pag alis niya, bumalik siya pangalawa. Pagbalik, tulog pa rin. Hindi niya just lang ginising. Bumalik siya ulit, pangatlo. Nung bumalik na siya, ginising niya. Anong picture? Kaya ni Jesus na, kaya ni Jesus na, matatag siya, malakas siya. Ha? Kaya niya. So, ang tanong kasi ay, ang tanong kasi ay, ano ba to? Uh, was he exalted? Was he drained? Uh, baka nga, pwede nga. Ay, ba, uh, no. Matatag yan eh. Sitara. Oh, another term. Sabi dyan. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under him, his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Ito naman. Yung picture naman na pwedeng yes. Di ba? Nung uh, sa Matthew chapter 4, after 40 days of fasting, etc., he got hung- hungry. Nung dinadala niya yung, uh, yung cross, hindi na niya kinaya, pinakarga kay uh, dun sa tao galing sa Sirene, ang pangalan na Simon. So, pwedeng yes, pwedeng no. Yung sagot. But, there is another angle to that. Let us look at the book of Psalm. Psalm presents sleep as the answer of confident believer to the dangers of this world. Bakit kaya nagbabagyo tulog na tulog si Jesus? Bakit? Jesus shows no fear because of because he truly has no reason to fear. Wala. Bakit? Eh, bumabagyo. Wala lang sa kay Jesus yan. Why? Alam ni Jesus hindi siya mamamatay doon. Bakit? Nakalagay na doon siya mamamatay sa krus. Hindi siya na nakalagay na mamamatay sa dagat. Look at this psalmist describing sleep. I lie down and sleep. I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Yun yung tatlong picture ito. Na de-drain ba siya? Yes, pwedeng no. Pero yung isang angulo, nakatulog lang siya dahil he has so much confident, confidence. And he knows the future. But Jesus experienced a freedom from fear that is unlikely in our ordinary experience. He knew his mission was leading him to the cross. He would not die on the sea. Verse 25, the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, yan, ginising siya. Unlike Jesus, the disciples registered their peril. Yan, mga mga disipulo, takot na takot. Yeah. They were going to die. They did not yet understand Jesus' identity. At this point in time, hindi pa nila talaga kilala kung sino si Jesus. Now, because they address Him as Lord, at this time, yung Greek word translated, it could also mean Master or Sir. Pero hindi pa as my Lord and my God. Hindi pa yon. But Master, Sir, yun yung translation ng Lord at this time. But at this time also, the disciples acknowledge that Jesus are the teacher but not as equal to God at this time. A clearer understanding of what it meant to for Jesus to be the Messiah would not come to disciple until after he rose to life from the grave. Take note of that. Hanggang doon, hindi pa rin siya naintindihan, hanggang sa resurrection na. Still, the disciples are already knew enough to come in Lord, one superior to them in authority in some way. Save us! We're going to drown. Yan. For many believers, the concept of save refers primarily to the gift of salvation. Yun yung save, no? At this time, yung mga believers, salvation. That is, save us. Save us from sin. Meaning, save us from hell. Bring us to, et- to eternal life. But at this time, the word save is, save us from drowning. Yun naman ito. Clearly, the disciples were asking Jesus to save them from drowning in the storm sea, not requesting eternal salvation. We too cry out to Jesus in this way at times. We also fear perishing physically 
because of events, some of our own making in this sin-sick world. When we look at the disciples in this account, in many ways we are looking in a mirror. Pare-pareho lang tayo ng mga disipulo. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? You of little faith, the main thrust of this lesson, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Take note. This is chapter 8, verse 26 already. But in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 8, ano yung mga nangyari dyan? Jesus had demonstrated the mighty power he had already demonstrated. Dinemonstrate na niya kung gaano siya, kung sino siya, kung anong power meron siya. What happened? My, the miracles in chapter 4 and the early part of chapter 8. Tingnan lang natin. Matthew chapter 4. Jesus went throughout and healing every disease and sickness among the people. All who were ill with various diseases. And these are miracles. No man can do this. In chapter 8, then Jesus, ito naman yung sa centurion. Diba? Sabi nung centurion, the, the centurion is not a Jew. Sabi niya, may sakit yung kanyang servant. Sabi ni Jesus, ay, ay sige pupunta ako dyan. Sabi na, sabi ni Lord, sabihin mo lang gagaling na yung katulong ko. And Go, it will be done just as you believe. These are the miracles witnessed by the disciples. Still, they do not believe in Jesus. Their fear is stemmed from their little faith. The word being translated, of course, five times. Five times. So we have discussed that. Jesus' words challenged the disciples to let their faith grow, to fit the magnitude of their Lord's power. Ito na, pinakikita ko na sa inyo kung sino ako. Ganun pa rin kalihid ang pananampalataya ninyo. Sinasabi dyan. Elsewhere, Jesus taught that faith as small as a mustard seed could move a mountain. Verse 26, He got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. Okay, tumayo na siya. Authority. Ah, Jesus rebuked the winds. May kayo little faith. Tumayo na si Jesus, ay tumigil kayo. Tumigil. Tumigil yung hangin. Tumigil yung alo. Ganun lang. Ganun lang kasimple. For a moment, the act of saving in the lesson text for shadows, saving for eternity. Wow. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Anong ibig sabihin nito? It for shadows, Saving for eternity. It foreshadows. Ito na. Pinakikita na tayo kung ano ang mangyayari in the latter part. Introduction. Introduction. <coughs> Jesus mighty deeds were visible signs of the greater work. And he would do to cleanse the guilty and restore to God as eternal people. Ito na. Ito na yung bigger picture. Ito na yung tinitignan ng mga Kristiyano. Itong ginagawa ni Jesus, pinatigil ang storm, pinatigil ang malalaking alon. Ano ibig sabihin? It foreshadows saving for eternity. Introduction. Introduction para sa saving for eternity. Jesus' followers went on to face many perilous situations that could easily and often did take their lives. And I put there number five. Kanina yung number four, puro negative yung mga disciples. Ito yung number five. They will ultimately learn to rely on Jesus to protect them. Even to restore life by resurrection. Tingnan ninyo rito. Ano ba? If we will go further to continue study the, the apostles, pinagpapatay sila. But, The fear was transformed into faith. Bakit? They believe that they will be restored to life by resurrection. Jesus will raise them up and they will live in eternity with Jesus in heaven. 
Yun ngayon, kaya nilagay ko yung number five. Kanina, puro negative, hindi maintindihan. Wala, hindi nila masundan kung turo ni Jesus. Ito yung mga disciples, one to four. In number five, eventually, no grow madweight sila. They learn to rely on Jesus. Dapat tayo, pare-pareho lang tayo ng mga disciples, natatakot din tayo. Gagaduate din ba tayo? Dito sa number five, when we put our trust and believe that God will restore life by resurrection. He will restore the disciples, believe that they, God, Jesus will restore them to life through resurrection. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Second Corinthians. He will always use his small, mighty, divine power for the long-term benefit of those who love him. That is true even when the situation seems hopeless, seems unresponsive. <laughs> ito eh, totoo ito eh. Parang wala namang yatang sumasagot. Even there are many scriptures. Yeah. Job 30.20, I cried, Oh God, but you do not answer. Psalm 22, Oh my God, but you do not answer. Revelation, how long, sovereign Lord, will you avenge sour blood? Etc. Parang hopeless. Parang hindi tumasagot ang Diyos. Praying from fear to faith. Are your prayers filled with anxious worry or with joyful trust? Can you faithfully follow the one who commands sky and sea? The one who loves us more than we can imagine, regardless of the storm? If not, why not? Verse 27, the men were amazed. Yan. As God's word put the waters of the sea in their place, so Jesus' word did the storm. Tignan nyo to. Genesis, God's word put waters. It was God who created water and the, de- and the wind, etc. Just by word. Jesus' words did with the storm. Yung sa creation, it's just by word he created. Jesus, by his word, the storm and the, the, the waves followed him. The New Testament makes that clear that Jesus is the creator. That the creator is able to command his own creation in a miraculous way should not surprise us all. Bakit ka? Eh, ginawa niya yan eh. Siya lumalang ng lahat ng yan eh. Ngayon, masusurpresa ka kung bakit sinusunod niya siya. Yun ang ibig sabihin nito. Because they were amazed. They were amazed. Tignan niyo to. Colossians 1.16. For by him, all things were created, things in heaven, on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. But we think Jesus' power at work makes disciples awestruck. Ito yung mga, they were amazed, etc., etc. In uh, Mark, it says, they were of great fear. You know, Mark, Matthew 9, 33, the crowd were amazed nung uh, yung uh, pinanggal niya yung demon uh, yung pinagaling niya yung pipi cripple etc the people were amazed they were terrified when he ordered the storm verse 27 what kind of man is this even the winds and the waves obey him Jesus had just done what the psalmist ito kasi there is the same scenario Exactly the same at what happened here. And that happened in Psalm 107, 23 to 32. The same. And the people in the, in the boat prayed to God. And they were saved. It's the same. The same scenario. In Jesus, God had become a man. Because of his mighty power that he graciously exercised on humanity's behalf, they had nothing to fear. In Jesus God had become a man. We know that very well. John 1.1 1, 1. And the word became flesh and he lived with us. What do you fear? Conclusion. Typically, the things that make us most afraid are those that threaten us in some way because we can control them. 
instead of praying first, we first try our best. Ito yung ating style. Ito yung ating style. Instead of praying first, ha, ginagawa muna natin. Ang atin. But in the end, we recognize that our control is very limited. Ayan. Limited. Lahat na ginagawa mo, tamang pagkain, tamang exercise, nakakasakit ka pa rin. Di ba? You are prudent, napakaingat, etc., etc. sa financial, meron pa rin financial crisis. Oh. Nag-iingat, pero may aksidente pa rin. Even our loved ones, we would like to protect them, but we can only do so limitedly. It cannot be constantly. There is a far superior alternative to trying to maintain control. Oh, our circumstances. And that is the Lord. What is the alternative? Dapat, instead of doing it first, then going to God, we have to, alternative is to reverse. Dapat, first we go to God and do it. When the Israelites go to war, they go to God first, and then they go to war. Something like that. Because Jesus gave his life for us, we can surely trust him to do for us what he did for the 12 men of little faith in small boat. Niligtas ng Diyos yung tatlong, labindalawang disipulo doon sa dagat, gagawin din niya sa atin. The created world is filled with moral dangers. Our reaction should be that of psalmist. Whoever dwells in the shelter, Psalm 91, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Allow the Lord to grow your faith and silence your fears. Let's pray. Lord, thank you very much for this lesson. Thank you very much for telling us that there is nothing to fear because you are in control. Teach us to be like your disciples who learn to replace fear with faith in that they trust that even if they die in your name, you will resurrect them and they will live with you in heaven for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The last slide, healed by faith. Oh, nandun na sa, sa chapter 9 na tayo. So nagumpisa umpisa tayo ng chapter 6, today chapter 8, then chapter 9. Magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos.